So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, it gives me great pride to introduce our master's programmes. That's programmes plural. Most of us are here to learn about the Emergency and Resuscitation Masters, which uh, is, is now um, really quite well established. We've recently added a Tactical Military Austere and Operational Medicine Masters, and of course, Tessa's Paediatric Masters. We're not focusing on the peds today. We're gonna to focus on the adult programmes. So, Queen Mary is part of the Russell Group, which is the uh, most prestigious group of universities in the UK. Uh, things like Imperial, Oxford, Cambridge, Bristol, Exeter, and so on. Queen Mary is a huge university. We, we've got over 27,000 students from 160 countries. So wherever you're from, you're not going to be alone. Uh, it has a very strong track record, both in research and education, and that's in a London and in a world standing and that building you can see on this slide that is the blizzard the blizzard is a unique place under the ground we have our scientists and then above the ground we have our clinicians and, th and this is an area that combines education lab research translational research and clinical research and that makes it a very exciting place to work from the lab to the patient so we have a large international faculty, most of which are kind enough to give their time for free. We have a smaller core faculty, which consists of myself, Ben, who <laughs> is the academic among us, Tessa leading PEDS, Paul representing cardiology, the military, pre-hospital care, Libby with a strong background in education and a PhD in simulation, Stephen Thomas, uh, who is now in the top 100 academics worldwide, uh, Chet, who's um, on leave for a little while, and Daryl, who has a strong interest in toxicology, snake bite, and is an emergency physician out in Queens. So why would you want to study emergency and resuscitation? Well, I guess for those with passion for the field is how could you not want to study the most interesting field in medicine? There's a reasonably large group of us in the emergency medicine field that see resuscitation arguably as a subspecialty, just as we might see toxicology or ultrasound um, or mental health or leadership as a subgroup or subspecialty in emergency medicine. It's only about one in 200 patients that need resuscitation, but that's where the risk is. And they take up a hugely disproportionate amount of resources. And you, need a lot of training that goes beyond your basic emergency medicine or critical care or anesthesia or acute medicine or acute surgery to really excel in this area. Um, I, I did fellowships in each of those specialties and this master's really distills what I got out of those fellowships into a single three-year program. The Module six and seven of the basic course have been adapted for tactical, military, austere and operational medicine by Paul Rees. This is um, in place of the ultrasound and is an extended toxicology module. And this is a separate master's that shares 80% with emergency and resuscitation. This is aimed not just at military docs and paramedics, but those that may want to work in harsher environments, the Arctic, the Antarctic, oil rigs, those of you that might want to do advanced rescue work, or those of you that are simply interested in doing aid overseas. Um, we do have a huge faculty. Uh, up there, you'll see um, Chris Carball. Well, you'll see Libby first. Chris is Professor of Emergency Medicine in Harvard. Brian Burns, who you'll know from Life in the Fast Lane, and Resus Me, Associate Professor of Emergency Medicine in Sydney. We can then see Gareth Davis, um, who set up London Hems, Mauricio, who uh, was ex president of Intensive Care Society for Europe. Chet is over to the uh, left of him and then we can see Barbara Bacchus who set up the heart score and so on. Now we set this program up very much as interdisciplinary. The idea for the program grew very much out of HEMS. Um, 
one of my jobs in HEMS was uh, dealing with professional standards and training. And it became really clear that a lot of the HEMS paramedics were incredibly motivated. And a lot of the HEMS doctors and nurses were incredibly motivated to learn. But really, there wasn't anything out there. The masters that we found were out of date and didn't really focus on resuscitation. So this idea grew out of HEMS teaching and rapidly expanded into emergency medicine and critical care. We welcome paramedics, nurses and students from all over the world, as you can see from the graph that Libby kindly prepared for us earlier. Now, this is entirely online. Wherever you are in the world, you can study with us. Um, we release three to six lectures or perhaps more now lectures every week and generally you're going to need somewhere between two and six hours of listening to those lectures we meet on thursdays for a dedicated tutorial we have some case-based discussions later on a thursday which run across the years years one and two each consist of four modules and each of those four modules consists of eight weeks and in year three you'll do a scientific paper that is you will aim to produce a paper for publication of around three and a half thousand words and a conference standard presentation we changed away from the dissertation because we wanted you to have something that was useful for your cvs um, we run a summer school, which uh, is put together and very well run by Libby. This looks at human factor simulation, has some dedicated lectures, some skills tutorials and an ultrasound course. In year one, we focus on the more general aspects of resuscitation. We start looking at the fundamentals of research. We move on to look at the physiology of shock, the foundations of resuscitation. We then get into the very meaty stuff, cardiac arrest, analgesia, sedation. And we end year one with a more general look at the background conditions that lead to organ failure. In year two, we focus a little more on special areas. We go from trauma to diagnostic imaging, to toxicology, and then to a choice of either pre-hospital or paediatrics. We welcome students from all over the world. And uh, as the Masters has progressed, we've welcomed students now, I think, from every continent except Antarctica, although one of our ex-students is currently in Antarctica. So I think we'll put that on the map as a semi-guess. So what do we want from you? Well, generally, we aim at people that have got five years um, experience overall. Now, that experience is clinical and differs a little from doctors, nurses and paramedics. Um, paramedics often spend a lot of their time in training. So paramedics will often be able to join us in their first or second year after graduating. For nurses, we really like you to have spent some higher training time in critical care or emergency medicine or both. And doctors, we generally like you to be uh, have got through your first two years. Quite simply, doctors joining in the first two years will not have enough clinical exposure to critical illness to really benefit from the course. And just as a, a, a rough guide, I think the average age of paramedics is somewhere in 40s but falling. Doctors, we have a range of consultants down to core trainees and nurses we've had some senior nursing managers in their 50s down to uh, nurses that are just beginning their resus career in their 20s so it is a hugely diverse age and culture range for assessments um, we always use multiple choice to assess core knowledge but we then supplement that with the bulk of the assessments either been a written assignment because you need to learn to communicate in writing presentations because for most of you you will communicate your knowledge not as a scientific paper but in teaching your colleagues and the most common way you teach colleagues is with a presentation um, and in year three as I said we bring in and look at um, a scientific paper module one also includes some dedicated critical appraisal time and that's so you get to practice what we've taught you in module one and you can learn to take apart papers because this is level seven learning level seven learning is all about you forming your own ideas your own opinions and then communicating those ideas and opinions to your colleagues that means you need to be able to read papers sort out the papers 
that are going to influence you because they're well done, they apply to your patients. And so we start very much with that background of science in mind. So I'm going to thank you very much. I'm going to encourage all of you to follow your dreams wherever they are. I'm going to hand back to Libby and I'm going to look out after, so no, I'm looking forward to hearing from Libby and our students. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you again for being here.